Interestingly, their shortlist includes Raven Hill, the Medeski, the Walker Stadium, Murrayfield and Crystal Palace's Selhurst Park. Well, one of Leinster's top performers this season has been centre Gordon Darcy, who this week, along with other things, spoke to Mark Robson about his work with the charity Goal last summer, where he helped to spread the word about rugby in Calcutta. Gordon, just tell me about your association with Goal and the trip you made to India during the summer. What sort of experience was that? Um, I suppose life-changing is the, is the easiest way to sum it up. If you can imagine, I suppose, a, a city the size of Dublin, which is, you know, it has you know, maybe one and a half million here, there's 14 million in a city the same size in Dublin. So um, and with you know, a huge population, you know, well below the poverty line. They're a very, very um, proud people and they, want to, they, they don't want handouts as such. They want to be shown how, they can, how to do it and then they can go and do it themselves, um, but sport's crazy as well. Here's Gordon Darcy, and Darcy's clean through, and it's the opening try for Leinster. The Gloucester defence was simply lacerated. Well, Gordon, you seem to be playing perhaps some of the best rugby of your career, certainly back to the standards you set in 2004 when you were the player of the, the Six Nations. What do you put that down to? Um, I don't know. Uh, Good, good pre-season. We get pretty, we get looked after pretty well here in Ireland, um, and playing in a really, really two really, really good teams at the moment. Um, you know, I'm blessed at the, with the I suppose out half and outside centre. I'm playing with week in, week out, so that certainly makes my my job an awful lot easier. Um, and after that, just good luck, I suppose. You feel all round, apart from that defeat by Edinburgh away, you're you're, you're getting it right. Yeah, I think we're, you know, we're we're constantly developing this brand of rugby that Leinster want to play. And you know, uh, Chex has always said about it. We, you know, we want to we want to play our game from wherever it is. If it's a kick off, if it looks good to attack, let's go. Um, but we need to be smarter as as a team and as a as individuals making the right decisions. And that's something that you know Brian has been adamant about this year as captain. That you know we have to be our own, you know, set our own standards and marshal ourselves. And we have to be the ones that develop this game of rugby. Chex can only give us the, the information and the. Uh, you know, the tools, we actually have to be the ones that actually go out there week in, week out and on the training field and do it. You've got a backline obviously created by God, I think. Uh, what's it like to play on that backline, and in particular with Conte Pome and O'Driscoll and that tremendous triumvirate there? Obviously, Felipe is, uh, you know, was he 100%, um, 100 inspiration. You know, he just does what he sees and, you know, it always seems to be right. Um, obviously, you know, he loses the plot every now and then, and he's slowly figuring out that referees don't speak Spanish. Um, but um, and then our back three at the moment is just, it's on fire, you know. What, whoever is playing there, if Luke is in, if Rob is in, but with Gervin, um, Shane and uh, Dennis, it's, you know, Dennis has come into the form of his life. Um, he's just right thing at the right time. Is, Kicking is absolutely spectacular at the moment and it just takes so much pressure off the rest of us because I know I, I can't kick a ball out of my way so it's nice to know that Dan can you know, step in and do that. What's the view in the game against Gloucester at King's Home? It's pretty much a, a dead rubber for them but it certainly isn't the case for Leinster. No, like there's, there's still a lot at stake for us. Um, you know, uh, two, two very different scenarios. One, we go over there, we win. We get, the, we get a home quarter final, we go there, we lose and we could be playing you know, uh, one of the top four teams away. You know, this this Gloucester team is playing really, really well. It's it's you know, the back line is really firing with some talented players. And, you know, Mike Tindall is you know, talking players come back into form and look at Mike Tindall as a prime example. He's you know one of the informed centres in England at the moment. Um, Simpson Daniel. Uh, I'm not sure if Allen's going to be playing. It looks like he might be out. But you know, I, I played against when we played him in in the first round. You know. I, I don't think I got one clean hit on them for the whole game. So, like their whole team is just littered with really, really high quality players. So, you know, we're taking nothing for granted against these guys. Will, in terms of talent, how close to uh, O'Driscoll is Darcy as a player? Do you think Gordon's a very, very special player? I mean, I, people say well, what happened for about a year and a half, and without putting too fine a point on it, he was carrying too much weight. He'll probably shoot me next week. I don't know to see him. Um, he just, and I think he suddenly realised how good he can be. And often talents like him don't perhaps realise that. And they go through life and they enjoy themselves and they enjoy going for a pint 
with, with their mate, and then suddenly they, you, something dawns on them all. Perhaps it's a senior player, perhaps Brian had a word in his ear, and just said, actually, Gordon, you're, we're part of something special. We can really achieve something. Let's get focused. And if you looked at him there, chisel, if you look at him on the field, he's like a loaded gun. He's just waiting to explode and go and burst through gaps. Mm. He looks so balanced. He is playing exceptionally well at the moment. And this is Leinster back nine, as always, feeding off each other, do you think, in this year's this tournament? The fluidity is still there. It was all in that Gordon Darcy interview. He, you know, talked about trying to be smart and think and balance. And he talked about Hickey, who's in the form of his life, and he's absolutely right there. The key men for me, in some ways, aren't even Hickey, uh, aren't even um, Darcy and O'Driscoll. It's the two wings. Hickey comes off that left wing. He gives you a kicking option. He comes off the left wing. He attacks like a midfield player. He enables the back line to be so fluid and move all over the place. Here he is again. Lovely little step. He does that, and then on the other wing, Horgan comes off his wing. And, Will, when you're a defender, you pick up the line that's against you. When you've got two wingers both coming in and the ability technically to handle passes like that, it's very hard. There's two spare men always causing trouble. Without being blisteringly quick, Shane Horgan just has an eye for a try line. He finds himself in the right place at the right time, which is a tremendous talent to have. And Dennis Hickey ghosts. Perhaps doesn't get involved too much on the physical side. And then he runs a short line against Ajon right through the middle of the traffic and scores the match winning try. Two guys who really understand rugby and understand what their fly halves can offer to them and float and wait and when they come in they make an impact. Have you seen a team with two wingers who play so far inside the 15 metre line all the time? They're always flooding that angle and they come at you as a duo, don't they? It, it helps when you've got 12 and 13 mm. making breaks like that. They follow them, they stuck it, look just in behind them, arrow heads and when the breaks made, they Bang. burst in and make the impact. A great oracle that you asked, Stuart. You mentioned him last week, didn't you, Shane Hogan? Rewarded you with a hat-trick. Lucky again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, to uh, Pool 6 now, where Beer is in Northampton.